I'm Jenna Morton. And I'm Tosh Taylor. And today we have decided that we're going to try, try, try. <laughs> to, There's a lot of tries there. <laughs> to get you in the right mindset for the upcoming summer break. I like how you said you, not us. <laughs> <laughs> this is for us. <laughs> valid, valid, valid. Uh, so the plan today is to speak with Angela McIntyre Harris. She is a business and mindset coach, and she is going to help us as parents get prepared for the upcoming summer months when the kiddos are back home, um, or really for anybody, because the summer really does change life for yeah. everybody, doesn't Absolutely. it? Yeah, yes. you don't have to be a parent. So, Angela, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, well, where do we start? Right. So, so many, before we really dive into the meat of all of this, why don't you take like 30 seconds or a minute to explain to people what you do mm -hmm. kind of on a daily basis and why we're going to dive into this today. Okay, so thank you for th thank you for the question. So really um, you know, I you know, I hesitate sometimes to put labels on what I do. Um, you know, that's for me, but I think that applies to like every single one of us, uh, especially as parents. Uh, I have been working as like a business and mindset coach doing events um, for you know upwards of seven years but really when i start reflecting and looking back i've been doing you know self-development you know talking about mindset and visualization um, since i was a teenager you know since i was a competitive athlete and i am very i would say self-aware of how i'm showing up in the world how i'm feeling in my body um, and how i'm like going about things in my life uh, sometimes things kind of fall apart and then I'm like, oh, I, I see what we did there, <laughs> right? I'm like, okay, we put too much on our plate. Um, I didn't prioritize myself. I, you know, I wasn't doing the things that are important to me. So I do a lot of mindset visualization, um, you know, and it doesn't, there's no rules around that. Sometimes it's 30 seconds to, to take a breath. Uh, but yeah, so I've been doing this work for, for a very long time and about seven years ago started, you know, doing events and things that uh, brought a lot more people into my community and into my vortex. And so now I share daily uh, the things that I do to help myself and in turn help others and my family specifically. Okay. Now yeah. let's let's talk about your family and the key word that you used there that caught my eye was prioritization. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so with summer coming, you have uh, a, what a teenager and a preteen, yes. right? Who are both two teenagers. They're both teenagers now. Yeah. Sorry if you're That's watching okay. this. I apologize. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah, that, that one was definitely on me. Right. Don't hate me, boys. Uh, but they're busy. They're athletes and they're on the go, and which puts your whole family on the go, not to yes. mention you're a business owner. And then there's also a spouse that's thrown into the mix there too, right. who I'm sure has his own needs. So yeah. how are you prioritizing everybody in the house? And like, what's your like go-to first step when you know the kids get out of school for the summer? What do you what do you do first? Okay, <laughs> I'll I'll pause to say that like I'm having like my heart's racing. <laughs> not, as long not, as not alone. Not because I'm nervous, um, <laughs> but you know it like when you start talking about those things, I'm like, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> like, how are you going to do that? And I'm like, but you, but I always do it, mm -hmm. right? I think all of us always figure out how to get done what we need to get done. Um, so I joke, like, you know, but really I, so I've been a mom for like 16 years and um, for me, it took me a long time to work through the mom guilt, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, we'll try to be politically correct to say like parent guilt, um, but really, um, you know, it's taken a long time for me to, to work through it and process you know, what's really important and what's not. Um, I still have to work on it every day like this i i won't you know come here and say like oh it's super easy i've got it figured out <laughs> this, i've got all the secrets right um but i think what's most important is like being really clear on what's important to you and what's not and once you have a clear vision for yourself and your life and how you want to show up for your family it makes it much easier to be like okay this is the most important thing and this is not right um, this is like I can I can do this or and I can't do that um, getting you know getting good at saying no to mm -hmm. other people to your to your family to your kids um, saying no to yourself you know like not shaming yourself for being like 
I don't have the energy or capacity to do this thing. Um, maybe right now I just need to take a breath, right? But it takes, like I said, it takes daily practice to be able to like really get like good at it. Uh, really for me, I think it's important to have a toolbox. So mm -hmm. have a toolbox of things that you can go to. Um, you know, there's some people thrive with like morning routines and evening routines. I am not one of those people. <laughs> so I'm not going to be like, okay, so start getting up at 5 a.m. Yeah. And this is what you need to eat. This is how you need to do it. You need to have eight hour sleeps. That those things are super important for sure to different people. Um, but it's not always possible. Like my kids, my kids don't go to bed early as much as I would like them to, so I could have a little bit of uh, time. That's not my reality. And we have late, you know, late sports and all kinds of things happening. So I think it's just getting really clear on how I want to feel and how I want to show up and then being able to say no. Mm -hmm. How does it work managing that in a household with two adults, two teenagers? How do you get everyone to have those conversations with each other to say, this is my priority, this is my priority, so how do we make these match in the family priority when they're not necessarily the same thing? Good question. I mean, some days are better than others. <laughs> And I think anyone who has kids, whether they're toddlers or they're teenagers, there's a lot of there's a lot of verbal communication, but there's a lot of nonverbals, and there's a lot of like feelings that can come up. You know, um, sometimes it's like frustration or anger. Um, sometimes like somebody has a meltdown. It's usually me, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, but I think it's like it's trying to have like respectful conversations and to be like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going away for this thing. Um, so I can't, you know, I can't take you to, you know, uh, the golf course, right? Because the golf course is, you know, for fun, right? If you had a, you know, a golf tournament, okay, like that's a, that's a priority. But, um, or if it's like, someone wants to go hang out with their friends um, and I'm like going in five other directions and I'm trying to make supper and I've got a conference call or something, I can't like that, that I can't do it. Right. So I think, um, not losing my mind in having conversations is super important and just being able to have that like ongoing communication i think is is what has has gone well for for us um, now i'm smirking because today this morning was a good day for us um, but we have other days where it's you know people are running around the house and trying to throw in football gear and you know this one's got oh don't forget your soccer gloves and don't you know you got this thing whatever um, so those are it doesn't go well every day um, but I think the the key part of it is pausing after you have a gong show of a morning day evening and go like okay what went right what went wrong and like what can we do differently so there are many times where you know everyone's left the house and we have a group text um, between all four of us and my family and i'll be like hey guys <laughs> i'm like so that didn't go so well <laughs> right and i'm not like it's not a rant i'm just like so this morning didn't go so well so tomorrow morning can we try this mm -hmm. Right, and so I'm sure sometimes the kids are rolling their eyes, but um, but then other times they're like, yeah, cool, right? Or I'm like, okay, let's take our lunch bags out the night before, um, let's do this. So I think it's like, you know, this is, I feel like it's a crazy time of year. Um, you know, June, the last couple weeks of, of school um, starts to be like, you know, it's safari day and it's this thing. Ugh. And like everyone's tired of making lunches, mm -hmm. you know, and now we're thinking about what's going to happen during the day, right? If you've got mm -hmm. teenagers, they're home or they're, they're working. Um, if you've got little ones at home, it's like, okay, now it's like entertaining them nonstop. Yeah. So and they want to stay up later because it's brighter and, right. it's, everyone and because starts their friends to fall are, out of routine yeah. a little bit. And and yeah. I think for our family, that was one of the first big realizations was that, okay, you know what? It's okay if the routine shifts mm -hmm. because the season shifts mm -hmm. or, you know, it was like, okay, no, no, we don't have to be going to bed at seven o'clock in June when it's still bright out. Right. It's okay if we let it slide a little bit, even while school is still in, and then even further maybe in the summer and we just work 
you know, back, right. you know, the end of August, we get that back. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> That's well, when it matters. And I think, you know, you brought up a good one. I think sleep is so important for all of us, right? And again, I'm not going to come on and say like, okay, we all need eight hours. Yeah. Make sure your kids are getting 10 or 12 <laughs> or whatever it is, because it's, the reality is there's always something happening, right? Um, but I think it's just like being mindful of, of our sleep and of the things that we're doing for ourselves, um, for you know our kids and our, our families. I like the like when you're implementing these things, or you are, as you said, kind of putting, saying no to your kids is a is a big one, and I, and that comes along with the parent guilt. Yeah. Um, but you want your kids to you know to be active and out there. But if you're killing yourself to do so. It's you need to start putting those limits in place, but it's also teaching your kids a level of respect for their parent as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The being able to say no to them. And I'm really good at saying no to my kids. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm evil. Right. But yeah. <laughs> you're you're, you're the one. mean mom. I am yeah. the mean mom. Yeah. Yes, it's true. But we also live in the country. So then yes. it's like I can't constantly be driving you into town or I can't, you know, same with you. That's, it's like, that's the tricky. Yeah. It's such a tricky balance when you don't live somewhere where your kids can just, where you can say like, oh, you want to go to your friend's walk over the street. Mm -hmm. like, right if you don't have that capability either because of where you live or where your kids' friends live, it, it adds that layer of like, okay, sometimes, yes, I'm going to prioritize taking you to your friends so you can socialize and I'm going to move this thing of mine. And But having those discussions of like, okay, yeah. yes, this time we're choosing this mm -hmm. thing next time I need to do this work thing or you know it's yeah. we, we we've started to have those conversations a lot in our house now that the kids are a little bit older that they can understand more yes okay yes I'm not saying that your game time with your and game as in video game yeah is not important <laughs> like to be honest <laughs> right but it is, like that that is important to them and so right. there are times when it's like yes you know what you saved up your money and you really need to go to the store to buy that Roblox gift card. Right what? now. You know right what? Now. <laughs> I've right got now. 10 minutes. Yeah. Yes. Let's do that right now. Mm -hmm. right. I can wait to do this, yeah. you know, this bit of work that I'm doing actually can wait half an hour. Yeah. So you feel like you've been chosen first right. this time. And yep. next time, the answer might be no. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I also think it's an opportunity for us to teach our kids how to be responsible mm -hmm. and how to prioritize things, right? Mm -hmm. And and to be respectful about how they ask us to do things or to right. show up, right? Um, because if they show up and they're like, you know, rude about it or they have a reaction to it, again, I'm not talking about toddlers. I don't even remember that <laughs> phase. I think we all block it out. Um, <laughs> But uh, but I think, you know, it's it's important for them to figure out, you know, if, you know, in our situation, if you want to go to your friend's house, if you want to walk to your friend's house after school, um, don't text me right, like, as you're waiting for the bus, right? Um, right? Yes. <laughs> and then, or, like, don't miss the bus, because then that adds, like, extra mm -hmm. for, for me, right? Um, or if you want to do something at a certain time on a Saturday and you make a plan, then, because our kids are awesome at making plans, right? Yeah, so good. So <laughs> Without good. informing us. Yeah. <laughs> um, then, you know, make sure that you're, you know, talking to us and, like, we're, we're coming up with a plan together. So keeping the communication key. lines open is, yes. is very important at any age, even when, they're, even when they're itty bitty, teaching them to, to voice what they want and yeah. politely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Like, that, that yeah. Could go. Yeah. And I think it's remembering the sense of time that they have, right? When they're mm -hmm. little, their sense of time is so mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. than as they get older, right? And, you know, if something doesn't happen within 48 hours, well, it's never going to happen never. if you're little, right. little, yeah. right? So, so having those, you know, I think that was a big step for me as a parent was like having that realization of like, okay, if they're saying this is important when they're six, well, this mm -hmm. is important to them in the next 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are not going to recall. Yeah. You know, if I say, oh, yes, we can do that next week. Well, I might as well say we're going to do that in five years. Yes, this yeah. is true. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So having that that understanding as a parent of like, OK, which things can we can we wait for and how do we build on that? And the older they get, the easier you can be like, OK, here's the calendar. Right. Let's mark it off. Mm -hmm. And this is Absolutely. when it's going to happen. Yeah. And now in our house, it's the like, OK, we have 
two months of summer and we have five people. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's what's talk about thing? this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And let's get that on the calendar and everything else yeah. is discussions and compromise. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Being able to physically see it too gives them that, which is something that you mentioned in the beginning as well as part of your, your coaching too, yes. right? The visualization of things. Yeah. Can we talk more about that? Because sure. I, I know you're not just talking about vision boards. No, um, you know, I talk, I, I do love vision boards. Yeah, yeah. I, I do love, you know, I, I talked earlier about having a toolbox. So figuring out like what is important for you, whether it is a physical visual uh, vision board or, or something on your phone or whatever. Um, but when I'm talking about visualization and even like vision for your life, um, there's kind of, it's two separate things, but they come together. So when I, you know, we, we all need to have a really clear understanding of, you know, I won't use the purpose word because people get, like, people start to freak out about it. Um, but it's like, how do you want to show up? Like, what do you, what do you want your life to look like? Um, it doesn't need to be complicated. Like, it can just as, as simply be, what do you not want in your life? Mm. Like, do you not want to be like fighting with your kids all the time? Do you not want to be, you know, rushing around everywhere? Do you not want to be in a certain city or house or, or whatever? So I think it's like getting clear on what that looks like for right now, like for today, for one year, three years, five years, like maybe think about where you want to retire. And it doesn't mean like if you decide on something today, it doesn't mean you can't change it in an hour. Right. right? <laughs> There's no rules. <laughs> like all the things that are happening in your head, like you're in charge of, like right. you get to be in charge of that. Um, so I'll give you an example, like for myself, like I really want to, um, you know, retire. Now I'm like, I'm looking at the home stretch. Uh, like it's just crazy, but mm -hmm. I really want to retire somewhere on the water, probably Prince Edward Island. Um, you know, I really want to be around family and friends, and I have a vision for what each day um, might look like, and not specifics, but I know how I want to show up. Uh, but you know, I think that makes it easier now to to be like, okay. I don't want to spend time doing that. I'm not going to, you know, if I'm doing volunteer work and uh, and I don't feel like it's making a difference or I feel like somebody doesn't need me or my time uh, might be better spent over here, then I can still help whatever organization, um, but I just need to do it in a way that doesn't require me to spend oodles and oodles and oodles of time. Right. So. Um, so that's the vision part of, part of it. So it's like getting clear on what your goals are and what your vision is. Visualization is more of, and that comes from, you know, being a competitive athlete and coach. Um, so it's like getting super clear on, you know, so let's take one of those goals. Um, so maybe for me, you know, I, I'm writing a book right now, do, working on a TED talk. Um, so it might be me uh, taking, I can do it now with my eyes open because I've been doing it for like 30 years. Uh, but it might be like closing my eyes, seeing myself on a stage, um, you know, having all the details of like how I'm going to show up and, um, you know, how I'm going to perform and then kind of breaking it down into smaller things. So, you know, I'm talking about some, a big goal of mine, but maybe it's a small thing, right? So if you want to have, a, you know, back to the chaotic mornings, mm -hmm. if you want to have easier mornings, take 30 seconds and sit down, it's probably gonna be in your car with your seatbelt still on, <laughs> right? And think about, okay, how do I wanna show up? You know, see yourself like calm, happy, like those are, again, those are goals of mine. Um, and think about like, what can you do? Maybe it's not worrying about the chaos in your house. Maybe it's not worrying about, you know, what video games or, you know, the things that your kids wanna do um, and just being super intentional about it. Okay. Yeah. Making it happen. Making it happen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's tricky though. So I'm sure there are a lot of people who are listening or watching who feel yeah. like, who feel like they've been trying to do that work mm -hmm. and they don't feel like they're succeeding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you help people who are feeling like they're stuck even when they try these things? Great question. And you know, I'll be the first to admit that so, like even what I just said, I'm like, oh, just do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's super easy. Like yeah. what's, you know, but I, I know that it's not. And I know that there are times like there are, 
Um, there are real obstacles that each of us face in our days. Um, there's health challenges, you know, all kinds of different things that we are up against. And so I think the key thing is just to give yourself grace, right? Like, you know, if you're showing up and doing your best, and that's the best that you can do today, then you've won, right? Like, it doesn't, we all are surrounded by, you know, constant reminders on social media and, you know, conversations around us of like, you feel like everybody else is thriving and you're not, mm -hmm. right? Like, you could be having the best day and then you show up and somebody's like, I just, you know, won the lottery and I bought a Porsche and you're like, oh, I'm only doing this thing, right? <laughs> um, or somebody, you know, it used to bother me when I was young, younger, um, but when my kids were younger, like people would be like, oh, you know, Sally's, Sally sleeps 12 hours every night. And I'm like, <laughs> my kids don't. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I, I might have got yeah. four hours sleep, right? <laughs> so I think it's just really um, kind of giving yourself grace and space to be where you're at and to know that even if you haven't done what you wanted to today, it doesn't mean you should stop trying. So, there's um, as I've gotten older, and we mentioned this off camera before we started. But as I've yep. gotten older, um, you care less and less what people think of you, which is <laughs> yeah. which is really nice yes. um, because it does relieve a lot of stress. Uh, yeah. For example. <laughs> The way you know, I have to grocery shop now because of the price of groceries. I walk. I haven't walked into the health food section of the grocery store in I don't know how long because I can't afford yeah. to shop there anymore. And but I am like packing my kids' lunch, and I would have been years ago concerned of what people thought was in their lunches. Right. And now it's just like, yes, here is your Rice Krispie Square. Yes, here is your fruit by the foot. Because right. uh, I don't. I just. This is what makes them happy. They're eating. And, it, and it's cheaper for us right now, right? So right. we don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, and even if you do have the choice, uh, whatever you choose to do is best for you and for your family, then these are the steps that you need to be taking, not what Sally is doing on social media. Correct. Doesn't matter. You, exactly. Usually it's, usually it's fake. And I will be the first to yep. admit that, uh, like, why well, we'll move the dirty stuff out of the way when I take a photo. <laughs> Today was my kid's birthday and I put her in a strategic pot spot yep. to take her picture right. where there wasn't dirty laundry behind her or dirty dishes. So yeah. it's, it's, it's fake. You need to always remember that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and you actually brought up one of my favorite things that I talk about often. Um, so what's best for you is best for everyone. And so if nothing else, you know, I'm constantly telling, you know, people in my work of art community, um, people, like everything I do online, I'm like, start with you. And as a, as a parent, that's not always easy. You're like, mm. oh, I should put my kids first. I should do this first. Or, and then you have that constant barrage of, okay, what's this person thinking or doing or whatever. Um, but when you start with like, okay, what, you know, what's best for me? And, you know, is it, okay, this kid only wants to eat carrots or this kid only wants to eat pretzels or peanut butter sandwiches or whatever, then just go with that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If it's it makes sense. until they decide they don't like it. <laughs> but exactly. That's a whole other discussion. It so. could change by the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Angela, thank you so much for coming in thank and you. helping us kind of have this discussion as we head into the summer. If people want to follow along, follow you on social media, let them know how to find you. So you can find me at uh, Work of Heart is my business name. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, on Instagram, Facebook. I'm all over the place. Um, I have a website as well, workofheart.me, and I'm always happy to uh, connect with people and, you know, to learn more about life and all that. Excellent. Thank you so yeah. much. Make sure you go and follow her so that you can be up to date when that TEDx talk comes out and when the yes. book comes out as well. We'll see you next week. Thanks. <laughs>